we're looking to put on lean tissue as opposed to body mass. The more you eat, the fatter you get, but not necessarily how much more muscle tissue you put on. So, uh, guys, anything you want to contribute for this uh, this episode? Anything that we uh, should discuss? No, Kurt, I think Kurt, do you want to do Kurt? Do you want to do a quick tangent about the growth and the calories? I just. Um... Yeah, I mean, we could touch on it. I, it probably warrants a whole video. It's just that the mm -hmm. food, right? Energy is not the driving force in muscle growth. There is an mm -hmm. energy requirement during protein translation. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not, you know, eating more does not yield more muscle, right? Yeah. And we see that with IGF and GH bypass that whole mTOR pathway by activating and showing the body that there's energy. Anyway, so in theory, if you're using Anchorlux or good growth hormone, you could technically grow in a deficit because your body's yeah, just and good energy and, re and, and recomp. Re because, yeah, because you take yeah. The, the fatty acids from the adipose tissue and literally translate that into new uh, uh, cell membranes. Yeah. So, you know, just, and of course, you use that for fatty acid oxidation. I, I think where this growth uh, in a caloric surplus comes from is in a natural state. And then, of course, you know, the enhanced bodybuilders would kind of adopt this. But I, I've proven to everybody that. I, I gained, what, 30 kilos, 20 kilos of muscle in a deficit. Yeah, I, That's a I, lot of muscle memory, but it's still real fucking muscle, you know? I gained all my size, some 100 pounds, with never going yeah. above single digit body fat. So, yeah. it probably not needed to overeat. No. Now, do you feel that you grow better if you're in a slight caloric surplus because it allows you to train harder? No. Use more drugs. <laughs> Cards. <laughs> no, I mean, I think food, food growth, like, I'm, I'm not in a deficit per se, but I don't think that, I mean, do you really feel like you can train harder when you're, when you're fat? I'm not uh, talking about fat, but it being in a clad caloric surplus. So I, I came from like 2,800 calories and I ramped it up to four and a half. And four did your eight. training improve? Yeah, I got significantly stronger. Okay. I mean, I, I, my workout is surrounded by most of my, my carbs are very heavy before, during, and after yeah so mm -hmm. it's i'm still getting the benefit from that i just don't do as much later yeah so you have inter pre and post right mm -hmm. yeah and how many carbs are we talking about it depends when i was growing it was a lot of carbs six to you know 600 to uh, at a very short period of time i did up to 2,000 grams of carbs wow. um, usually about a thousand grams of carbs a day and the majority yeah. of it pre post and but if you want to get leaner, you dial back the carbohydrates. That's all so, I do. It's the only variable yeah. I play with. My fat stays low all the time. My protein yeah. stays about the same. Um, so yeah, your calories do fluctuate a little bit? They do. It's, yeah, it's, now it's, I'm closer to maintenance because about, I'm not interested in growing. Yeah. And we're talking about, what, five, three, uh, 200 to 300 calorie fluctuation? At, at the most, yeah. I mean, I still my maintenance is, last time I checked, it was closer to 5,500. So I still have to eat like an asshole oh, wow. to maintain Fuck. it. I mean, you saw me Insane. in the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Good. I love um, it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't generally post my food because I think it makes people upset that I can eat like that. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to live it to, uh, you know, understand it. The funny thing is, like, metabolism seems to be quite adaptive. So if you slowly ramp up your calories and training intensity and drugs alongside of it, then at one point you just hit this point where you recomp, uh, even if you eat a boatload of food because the metabolism has increased so much. Mm -hmm. I just think that a lot of people misunderstand this caloric adjustments by making 500 to 1,000. Yeah, it's too big of a jump. It's too much of a jump, but that's how you get fat or that's how you get flat. You're like, yeah. I'm going to go from 5,000 to, to 2,500 and start cutting. No. The 10%, small increments. Yeah, yeah. Small, and, and usually 10% works, right? So from yeah. 5,000 to 4,500 or maybe even 4,700, small, small adjustments to keep the metabolism going and keep your body, uh, you know, burning as it should be, whereas these, these crazy adjustments up and down, that's where the, the problems start. Yeah, and it's not maintainable. Um, the guys that I know that bring their calories way low to try to lose fat, how long do they maintain that diet for? Then they're cheating I, on the diet all the time it. anyway, and then what's Yeah, the so I did it for three years, right, low calories, but then I would have a refeed in the weekend, but then I realized after the United States that my metabolism for my size is not where it should be, so I decided to do a hard reset. And then now I'm in a good position again where mm -hmm. I'm recovering, right? I'm training legs twice a week, chest twice a week. Um, you know, I have a boatload of energy. And it, so it's all newfounded for me because I was calorically restricting for such a long time, trying to stay lean for, lean for social media. Um, 
and then now I'm staying just as lean on double the calories. Yeah, it'll backfire eventually, right? If you diet too long. Yeah, you see that in exactly. women too. I was I don't generally coach women, but I was I'm helping a client coach a bikini athlete, and the same thing. She's mm-hmm. been dieting since last January, so she's on a thousand calories now going into yeah. the show. Way too low because her metabolism yeah. tanked. And the funny thing is, so I gained all this size, right? From 92 kilos to, let's say, 110 on 2,800, 2,500 calories. And now I d- almost doubled my calories and I gained five extra kilos. Hmm. It's, it, so, but the recovery is 10 times better. Right? So now I'm, now I'm pushing against my limit of 120 kilos where I would really have to ramp up the calories. So I think that growth and calories are not linear. Um, no, there is really, a relationship. I just meant it's not this vast, like... The more no. you eat, the bigger you're going to grow. Yeah, you'll no, move the scale more, but that's not what you're looking for. Yeah, and it that's seems to me, uh, the, at one point, you need to eat so much food just to sustain your size. Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of guys hit that wall um, because you're eating so much food that physically you can't eat anymore. And then, yeah, you really have to leverage the pharmacology or sleep 16 Something. hours per day yeah. <laughs> or use a beta blocker to, to reduce your heart rate, something like that. Um, yeah, so it... it I think a lot of people really misunderstood the calories that it's some sort of linear progression, um, but in the end, it's not really the case. And I think the small adjustments, that's where the secret is to kind of assess how the progress is going yeah. energy wise, training wise, <laughs> um, body composition wise, and then make a small change of 200 calories or 10% based on your total and then take it from there, uh, which it. is hard, uh, but that's why we have coaches. Yeah. I guess yeah. um, <clears throat> where it gets, blurred in terms of even like what Kurt said with body weight we're looking to put on lean tissue as opposed to body mass Mm -hmm. so obviously the more you eat the fatter you get the heavier you get but not necessarily how much more muscle tissue you put on so and then at the end of the day as bodybuilders the more fat that goes on the more you have to diet off and the more you have to potentially suffer or diet longer or you know there's so many variables that play into that that yeah, I agree that there is a ceiling towards food. Um, similar to like when you're dieting someone, like for me, whenever I coached, you know, people to the the stage, I'd never let calories go below like 12 calories per pound. You know, we've seen people go as low as nine, eight or nine calories per pound, 12 to 13, knowing that, 15 calories per pound it's is roughly, you know, maintenance. 12, like Kurt said, you just got a small little deficit um, and then play off the anchor of activity if you need yep. to create a deficit. But then the other mm. side of it, then I've come to, you know, coming back to the mitochondria, you get them to operate better. You've got a better playing field towards how much food, your recovery, activity, etc. So yeah. I think even when you're you're pushing someone in like a, a growing phase, like 15 being maintenance, 18 being your surplus, end, yeah. 20 if you're really pushing it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, what what is the rate limiting factor to you putting on your, your tissue? If, all, if your protein intake is staying the same, you're consistently recovering with glycogen, it's either the training stimulus or the recovery, which you circumvent with, what Kurt right. said with more drugs. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. and, and the actual rate limit, right, is like I said before, is how many stem cells you have. That's why muscle yeah. growth slows down as you age. Mm-hmm. True. It's, you True. Know, there are many, many stops before that point that it could be rate limit. Someone's genetics, right? You have 300 some odd genes that control this stuff. 88, 70, 77 genes directly controlled by steroids. You have so many things that could go wrong before you even get to the stem cell thing. But if everything's yeah. right, if the stem cells are the ultimate rate limit not the energy source yeah micro injuries preventing you from training at your There's highest capacity that that's, yeah yeah, yeah i'm saying yeah. In, a, in a vacuum it would be the stem cells mm-hmm. i don't think most people get there no, <laughs> to be honest they're not, in a vacuum. <laughs> they're not in a vacuum exactly 